Hey everybody, and Tony here, and at long last, it's my top 25 all-time favorite as told by Ginger episodes. And before I start this countdown, I'd like to mention an interesting trivia about the opening theme, I'm in between. Now this theme song was sung by three different singers. The first one was Melissa Disney, the second being Cree Summer, and the third being R&B legend Macy Gray. Now what's interesting about each of these, well, singers of the theme song was that Melissa Disney was used in the first episode, the, well, the pilot of the main show, and Cree Summer was used for the first and second seasons, and then Macy Gray was used for the rest of the episodes. Now, I can't really decide which interpretation of the song I really love the most. I like Melissa Disney's version because it's Ginger singing it, and it's really conveying that this is her story and this is how she sees her life, and that she's a young girl who's trying to find her way in life, but she's sure that she can find it one day, and she can totally make the best out of her situations, and just really have a strong head on her shoulders, all thanks to her friends and family. And then we have the Cree Summer version, which she sings so note perfectly, and it's the version that I listen to and even love to listen to for several times, because, well, Cree Summer is actually a really great singer when you think about it. And then Macy Gray with her contralto voice and that really smoky timbre that she uses very well just to also exhibit that it's a very down-to-earth version of the song. So overall, kind of tough of which one's the best for me, but they're all very special in their own way, so I can't really decide. They're all very awesome. And now let's get to the list. Number 25, we have Cry Wolf. Now the premise is like this. Dodie, being the chatterbox that she is, tells Miranda that Ginger can't shave her legs. Miranda uses this to blackmail Ginger into not telling her secret, and therefore just make Courtney repulse Ginger and try to make Courtney go back to Miranda. And then the B-plot concerns Carl gathering as many human hairs as possible in order to become Wolf Boy as if that scheme will try to make him the eighth wonder of the world. And what's interesting about this episode is that this is the first episode that I have seen when I first saw As Told by Ginger at the tender age of nine years old. I was kind of curious about the show because I've seen this episode when I was also surfing the net trying to find some games to play on Nickelodeon's website. And then when I saw As Told by Ginger, I was like, hmm, I'm quite curious about this show. It looks it looks to be like it's very interesting and can be very much relatable to a lot of teens and tweens out there. And then when I tuned into this episode, I was totally hooked. It had a very great first impression on me, and even a long-lasting one is that. And sure, the ending is kind of predictable or even the climax is kind of predictable with Gin- with Ginger, Macy, and Dodie helping each other out just to help Ginger like eliminate all the hairs on her legs and using a lot of hackneyed ideas like tweezers and even trying to find something that will make people say, okay, she shaved her legs. And in the end, Ginger shows Miranda her, her shaved leg and she says, well, Miranda, You won't have to boss me around anymore. Miranda scoffs it off. And Courtney says that she pretty much compliments on that. So overall, this was definitely a great first impression of what I was going to consider in like a heartbeat. That I have to really say that this was a long lasting impression that has made me enjoy the show and has really made me have such a great ride with the show as I speak. Number 24, we have Of Life and Friends. Now, the premise is like this. Now, Chess, excuse me, Chet Zipper is abdicating his position as the school announcer, and he passes it on to Dodie Bishop. 
She's very excited about it, but unfortunately, she lets the power and the obsession of really staying in this position really get into her head. In which she also uses her position to, like, spit out the latest gossip of what's going on, who's cheating on who, and all that. And then when Carl's lice gets loose, well, they were basically Hoodsy's lice, but Carl has tried to train them to become, like, circus performers... Now, when the lice gets loose, excuse me, when the lice get loose, they end up, well, going to certain students as well, especially on Courtney. Now, Lois does a lice check, and which also embarrasses Ginger, but uh, Courtney is pretty much a victim of getting the lice, and this also shocks Courtney, and then Lois proceeds to tell. Courtney, that she should use a very special medicated shampoo. Now, this also fuels Dodie to announce to the students that these are the lice-ridden kids, which also includes Courtney. And, well, Ginger does the right thing. She dashes out of her classroom, goes to the office, and snaps the cord, and then... She calls Dodie off for being such a power-hungry, well, dimwit, so to say. Dodie still doesn't believe this, and she feels that her friendship with Ginger has been pretty much severed. It's not until later that night that Co Courtney thanks Ginger for saving her butt, and, well, Courtney and Dodie reconcile, albeit kind of hesitantly, though they ended up reconciling, and, well... The rest is history. Now, another episode that also got me into the show as well, and this is one that I still enjoy to this very day, and it also taught me that sometimes there are people who can pretty much let power get it over in their heads, and this is shown well executedly, and even though I don't really care for the character of Dodie, and I kind of found myself calling her a huge bitch, I have to say that this episode still left a long-lasting impression on me. Number 23, we have I Spy a Witch, which is basically the Halloween episode of As Told by Ginger. In this episode, we have a school play going on in which there is sort of a musical play about this young woman by the name of Goody who is accused of witchcraft and has to be executed. Ginger gets the role, but Miranda is very jealous, so... She plays a prank to mask the school statue with green paint and make it like a witch, frames it on Ginger, Ginger is kicked out of the play, and then basically Carl and Hoodsy caught Miranda in the action by getting a snapshot of her. Ginger notices this, dashes off to school, and even though Miranda is still playing goody, Ginger gets in the chorus and sings, I spy a witch, leaving Miranda on the pillory, and, well, basically said, I love it when Miranda gets a comeuppance. It is totally sweet when she has a comeuppance. I mean, sure, it's, it's sort of, it's really sweet when seeing Miranda in a comeuppance. Not that I'm promoting anything sadistic, but, yeah, what more can you expect? And also, while it's not memorable as, let's say, Arnold's Halloween, I still like it because it's a very fun Halloween special, and it's just, it's just so much fun. Not to mention, the song I Spy a Witch has become kind of an earworm for me. At number 22, we have Carl and Maude, and oh boy, this is the first episode on this countdown list that deals with Death. And I dare not spoil the ending because if you would have seen this episode already, I'm sure that you would have been teary-eyed. Now, what's interesting also about the character of Maude, the crazy old lady, is that she was also voiced by Carol Kane, a very interesting actress who's had a career as a character actress and even that of stuff on Broadway and even off Broadway and has also been the voice of Emily of the Emily Dickinson trophy from Phoebe Cheats. So this is basically a record that I'm setting with myself. 
there are voice actors who have done work in Hey Arnold and now have found themselves, or even some of them have found themselves working in As Told by Ginger. And looks like she's not the only one that's done work right here. So basically, after the events of Ginger the Juvie, Ginger, Dodie, Macy, and to some extent Carl have to end up like doing community service. Well, except Carl. He's just there to be taking care of Ginger because she's the older sister. So when she's at, when the girls are advised that they should not visit Maud from room 202, Carl overhears this, snaps off his leash, and then finds the crazy lady from room 202. And once, she, once he sees her, he's automatically fascinated with her. Her will to prank people, her will to really have fun in life, despite her whooping cough and her implications that she's not, well, doing so well in terms of her health. I mean, she's still a very fun character to watch. In fact, Maud reminds me of Grandma Gertie from Hey Arnold. Now, if you put Grandma Gertie and Maud in the same room, ooh boy, they're going to have a freaking swell time with each other. I mean, cracking jokes, dressing up in costumes, and just doing a lot of fun, crazy things. What more can you expect from two awesome old grannies? And to some extent, when Courtney comes over to visit, Maud has to be pretty much like Ginger's Ginger's grandma, which I found very fun. And I used to think that Maud was Ginger's and Carl's grandma. Only to only to only for me to realize that no, she's just basically playing Ginger's grandma because oh well, it's just for Courtney to not get the huge impression that this is the same woman that Carl is quote unquote dating. I dare not spoil the ending, but it kind of came off of left field and kind of made me, you know, feel a bit dead inside and very sad inside. But overall, Carl and Maude is a very fun experience, all thanks to Maude, who definitely stole the show for me. She's a fun character, and she's just bursting with energy and bursting with life despite her deteriorating health. And number 21, we have The Right Stuff in which Ginger, Dodie, Macy, and Courtney take a French class with two older girls by the name of Chantel and Andrea. And note by the way they look, yeah, you can tell that these girls are bad news. And what they plan to do to Courtney when she hosts a pool party is that they plan to de-bikini her because they notice that Courtney, well, stuffs her bra. And... Well, it also goes to show that, well, Dodie and Macy are also pretty much concerned for Courtney because, yeah, when you think about it, even though Courtney can be kind of a ditz and can be annoying to some people, at least she means well. At least she can be like a true friend and at least she is very fun and very bubbly. In fact, she's very enjoyable when I think about it. And then, you know, it really shows that friends are there for each other, and especially with the case of Courtney. And even though Courtney is not like Ginger's, Dodie's, and Macy's best friend forever, you know, she's still very thankful for having such a great time, and, well, she's just, she's just happy to have them. And it also shows that that's the thing about friendship, that the show really emphasizes on true friends really do stick out for each other and that's what this episode really taught me and then number 20 we have new girl in town in which a girl named Letitia Bowers who's dressed in goth clothing comes in and her father is a mortician a lot of stuff has been said about her that she has a morgue and has a lot of these weird stuff going on about her and Ginger befriends her and she pretty much reciprocates 
And this episode really goes to show that you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't judge a person just because of the way he or she dresses. And sometimes you just got to get to know a person a lot deeper. Of course, it's been done in several other installments. But I think this one handles it very beautifully and has a great sense of tact and well execution. And then we have number 19, an Even Stephen Holiday Special, which is another favorite holiday special of mine. And it's totally up there with Arnold's Christmas, though I have to say that Arnold's Christmas is a lot better. Now, but at least it's also on par with Arnold's Christmas. So, basically, Ginger is trying to make a Christmas family tree, but she feels like it's not the same without her father, Jonas. And Lois has found out that Ginger also has Jewish heritage, which is no surprise because Ginger's and Carl's great-great-grandfather is, well, Jewish. So basically the episode has Ginger and the family celebrating both Christmas and Hanukkah, which means they're both keeping their traditions alive and even exploring new ones. So this basically is a very great episode and it's just a lot of fun to watch as well and it leaves you with a warm fuzzy feeling just by watching this episode and it's very heartwarming and very heartfelt. That's all I can say about this episode. Number 18 we have Come Back Little Sea Seal Girl. Pretty much a fan favorite for a lot of people and even that of mine as well. I first watched this episode as a nine-year-old, what more can you expect, and was automatically hooked. Basically, Macy wants to, well, do the little seal girl thing for this talent show, but unfortunately, people think it's too childish, and, well, even Dodie and Ginger kind of feel that it is kind of childish, but Macy still believes that she can pull this off very well, and, well, she even believes that the little seal girl is pretty much their tradition and she basically wants to do it no matter what the cost. What we get is a very beautiful interpretation of the little seal girl. At first, lip synced, but after technical difficulties, well, Macy finds it in herself to sing I'm a little seal girl. And then she manages to sing it, and, well, she basically won the talent show. Pretty much impressive in this episode, and I really liked it. It was just a lot of fun seeing Macy do her thing, and it was just enjoyable seeing her do the very thing that she believes in. And number, number 17, we have a three-part episode, Season of Caprice which was the first episode that I also caught ever since, well, I was still a kid, and I really loved it. Basically, Ginger, Macy, Dodie, and Courtney head off to spend the summer at Camp Caprice, Darren and Miranda spend it in military camp, and Carl and Hoodsy spend their summers as cleaners. And, well... A lot of things go about in the camp in which Dodie has the responsibility of being the, like, the sort of the patrol manager or even, like, the leader with the badge and the whistle. And Ginger meets a boy by the name of Sasha and his younger sister, Melanie. And she kind of has feelings for him and he has feelings for her. And she even has a very sisterly bond with Melanie in which she's also very inspired by the song that Ginger wrote for Sasha, even though there were times that Ginger and Sasha had a little bit of a falling out with each other. But still, the relationship between Ginger and Sasha was pretty sweet. And not to mention her sisterly relationship with that of Melanie just gorgeous. It hits you right there because Melanie is a very cute character. She is just, she's just adorable and she's, 
She's quite inquisitive as well, but she's very fun. And she almost is like a little sister towards Ginger. And one that Ginger could relate to as well because, well, it's not just because of the fact that she's a girl, but also because of the fact that they both have their similar passions when it comes to music, art, and a lot of other things. Not to mention the song that Ginger sings, Copper Colored Ponies, was just very touching and very sweet. The ending was equally sweet as well, with Ginger gathering up photos that she's gathered from her time at Camp Caprice and even Darren's and Miranda's time in military camp and like compiling it in a collage. It was a very sweet three-parter that I enjoyed and I definitely had such a wonderful time with it. At number 16, we have Gym Class Confidential in which the girls are basically, well, involved in watching this, well, sort of like a sort of like a biology video for sexual education in which it explains the like the what happens to the body when they go through puberty or what happens when someone gets intimate with other people this causes Macy to become very traumatized at the idea that she feels rather sick Miranda takes advantage of it like the bitch that she is and while well, Ginger and Macy, well, help, excuse me, Ginger and Dodie help Macy try to stay strong. And let's just say that, well, during the climax, when that happened, Macy gets squeamish. But, well, Ginger and Dodie support her, saying that she was still very strong for sticking over for this. And, well, she had the courage to really just stick along with it well. So basically what this episode taught me was that sometimes in life there will th be things that will scare you. But if you have the courage, if you have the will and the determination to face it, then you can face anything. And that's what I got when Macy managed to face her fear with the sexual education class that she got herself, that they got themselves into. It's a very great episode and it was just well executed and it was just really great seeing Macy shine through this as well and number 15 we have never can say goodbye which is the episode that had Darren's head brace removed and let me just tell you that the sequence when Darren's head brace removed was just was just quite flawless and really artistically done you see it like flying out of his face and then clanking on the floor and then you see a new Darren looking very handsome and has become very popular with a female crowd. This also causes some tension between Ginger, Dodie, Macy, and Darren because when you think about it, yes, Darren did start off as their friend, especially that of, well, Ginger as well. And yeah, they were basically neighbors and also best friends. But now that Darren has his headgear removed, he's now pretty much the hotshot of the school, attracting a lot of young girls and attracting even the attention of Miranda. And well, she's also kind of taking advantage of this new situation as well. And the ending that I got was really sweet. And not to mention the closing song, Wrong, sung by Kenny Blank, was just gorgeous. It really helps that Kenny Blank was such a very gorgeous sounding singer. With that mellow voice, it was just, it was just, it was just gorgeous listening. It left me speechless and just to, just to listen to how much talent this show really has. Think about it. You've had voice actors that were also singers of the show. Aside from Melissa Disney, you've had Cree Summer, who was the voice of Miranda Kilgallen. And then you have Kenny Blank, who ended up singing Wrong, which I thought really shows that this show has magnificent talent and it's just used so well. At number 
14, we have stuff will, stuff, stuff will kill you. Yeah, stuff will kill you. Talk about another episode that also talks about the pains of addiction. Now, there is this new coffee in town that's called the Mocha Loca Frothinator, in which the opening scene shows that once you take a sip out of it, you are in, like, you are in, you have the, you have a lot of energy to go through the day, but sometimes you get to see that, yeah, you have so much energy, but sometimes you can't really seem to express yourself. And it's basically true with Ginger because she has to constantly stay up and try to work her butt off so that she can be a good impression to the other Miss Zorsky, the mean Miss Zorsky. Yeah, basically the, the Miss Zorsky's cousin, who was basically the new teacher in Ginger's high school years. This Miss Zorsky is meaner, stricter, and will stop at nothing just to try to prod her students. And with this episode, it really does show how painful addiction can be, especially with Ginger's caffeine addiction ever since the Mocha Loca Frothinator came out. This concerns not only her friends, but also her mom as well, because what more can you expect from a mom who's also a registered nurse? She also knows that this type of thing is very, very much dangerous to her health and might cause her to start having addictions and might end up like losing her mind. So basically, well, Lois tells Ginger to take it easy for a while and just let her body work naturally. And of course, Ginger ends up sleeping in class because of that. But what more can you say? This episode really is tactful of the message that it presents about addiction. Yes, it's almost like Chocolate Boy, but with this, it also shows you that sometimes with addiction and work stress, they can become a very deadly match. With Chocolate, with Chocolate Boy's case, the main source of addiction mainly comes through abandonment, which has basically caused Chocolate Boy to become the way he is. But with Stuff Will Kill Ya, this all has to do with the constant work stress faced in school, especially to a lot of young people who are trying to make it to the top. And this definitely shows it with such tact and with such respect as well. At number 13, we have About Face. And this episode has one major highlight that I keep going back to. Basically, Dodie's mom, Joanne, is a substitute teacher in their school. And Dodie sort of feels embarrassed with her presence. And she also finds out that her mom was missed popularity back in her high school years. She was never the popular one, and she was constantly being looked out on by other people, and people thought that she was just the weird person. But what really made me root for this episode was the ending song, sung by Dr. Dave. Diamonds are expensive. It's also held by such a, such a fantastic looking montage that sort of reminds me of those like openings that you see in a lot of movies, well, spy movies like James Bond movies, and it's just gorgeously done and gorgeously sung. And well, the thing is that sometimes with the main episode, you also have to be very true to yourself, and that's what the characters in what what was that about face pretty much have to has to learn. But still, the biggest highlight, like I said, was the closing song. Diamonds are expensive after Dave, well, proposes to Lois, which I found very hilarious and just very much fun to watch. So overall, the biggest highlight may be the Diamonds are expensive song, but this episode also tells that sometimes in life, you really have to be true to yourself, and sometimes... You can't always be the cool one. You can't always be like the one that you're always going to say, oh, I'm, you're, all, you're always going to stay cool, but you also have to be as real as possible. And that's what I really got with this episode. At number 10, excuse me, number 12, we have 10 Chairs, the Thanksgiving episode, in which Ginger has plans for the Thanksgiving holiday and has one special guest that neither her mom or her 
brother should know. And surprisingly, it's their biological father, Jonas. She felt like it would be a great idea to invite Jonas to the Thanksgiving party, but Carl is in total resentment of that. And Lois is still kind of he uh, iffy and totally unsure about it. But Dr. Dave still manages to, to deal with it. And then it's actually a pretty touching episode as well. This also serves as the second to the last episode of As Told by Ginger before it led up to um, the, the wedding frame. Yeah. And I really found this episode equal parts heartwarming and at times a bit heart-wrenching as well because, well, when you think about it, yes, it was rather disgruntling of Carl to see that now Jonas is basically, well, in the Thanksgiving celebration and he doesn't really want Jonas as a father. He still doesn't want Jonas as a father. But when I see Jonas and Dr. Dave working together and calming the turkey down after it's gone wild, I have to say, it was a very noble effort done by these two gentlemen. So overall, a very touching and very much an awesome Thanksgiving episode. At number 11, we have... Oh boy. This is also another sad episode. No hope for Courtney. And I assure you, this isn't the last sad episode that you're going to find in this list. Basically, this episode is known for pretty much one thing. This episode was aired when Kathleen Freeman, who was the voice of Mrs. Gordon, passed away. And this episode was dedicated in memory of her. So it kind of made sense that Miss, Mrs. Gordon had to end up being taken off the air and, well end up being, end up, end up passed away. And it's basically a really sad episode for me as well because she basically embodied Mrs. Gordon. So basically the idea was a new girl named Hope comes in. She at first seems like to be a nobody, but then she starts becoming popular and Courtney starts to feel jealous about it. And then, well, things go back to normal after one party in which Courtney has regained her position, but more than anything, the biggest highlight was really Carl trying to have Mrs. Gordon back at their school. Overall, quite a sad episode as well, and especially when it came to the issue of Kathleen Freeman, but still a very worthy episode, and one that I still look back on with fondness. Well, that's it for part one. Stay tuned for part two, and until then... See you later, guys.